We're at AirVenture 2022 at Oshkosh. I'm with Jim Rutler with Ithra. Jim, you and I met back at this very show in 2017. You were uh, your first year as a vendor in the Innovations Building. You know, what struck me when I first met you guys, uh, you were placing emphasis on cockpit biometrics, something that didn't really exist at the time, and it's been a pretty good momentum. You recently reeled in an Aviation Consumer Editor's Choice Awards for your, uh, your cockpit biometrics data. We're here at the show in 2022 with a integrated oxygen system, and your focus has pretty much been on portable interfaces. But now we've got a new interface that's integrated with the airplane for both the experimental and certified market. Uh, we're very proud of the award that we have uh, won from Aviation Consumer Magazine this year, recognizing our contributions to the aviation community and safety for our biometrics. Um, and the biometric controlled oxygen systems for the portables. What we've done is we've taken that technology and integrated it into the cabin to clean up the cannulas and make it easier to access the oxygen. Um, this includes panel mounted push button control, panel mounted cannula access, as well as avionics integration. All right, the, uh, I'd like to explain a bit about the operation for the system. We've got two and four place as well as six place systems but what I'm demonstrating here is a four place for the RV-10 that we built. Uh, this has, uh, this control unit takes oxygen input on the input line and outputs it on the four output lines, pilot, passenger one, passenger two, passenger three. You mount this behind the bulkhead in the tail cone and it accepts the incoming oxygen line and distributes it out to each of the passenger stations for access uh, on demand. The bottle uh, that we are using in our RV-10 is a composite 925 liter aluminum lined bottle that uh, uh, provides endurance of approximately 95 hours or more at 14,000 feet. Uh, this box would live in an area where uh, it was not visible. It would be out of sight uh, to provide a clean installation. Um, the box itself weighs approximately four pounds. Uh, the two places about half that weight. It can be mounted in any orientation, vertical, horizontal, or upside down. It, it really is, has no impact on the operation of the system. The hookup is a 12 volt power and ground. All of the components for the breathing inhalation detection reside in the one unit. There are no independent stations. So everything that you need is here. It's powered with one 12 volt power and ground and uh, there is a wire output to the avionics and there is a, a wire output for the button control uh, from remote. All right, as far as what the AVI system looks like in the aircraft is you've got a push button control of the AVI and cannula plugs at each of the stations. In order to access the oxygen at any point, you press the oxygen button, you plug in the cannula, and then you begin breathing. All right, one of the advanced features that is not required but is optional on our system is that you can use the iOS app, which works on iPhone or iPad, to get more information about the system. It provides pilot respiration rate as well as flow rate and integrates the uh, oximeter information to provide blood oxygen level information for each of the passengers that is breathing on the system. In addition, there is an option to increase or decrease the amount of oxygen that is delivered for each of the passengers on a per station basis. I think one of the most exciting things for me is that we now have panel integration uh, through advanced flight systems. Um, they have built a dedicated IThra cabin and environmental panel that uh, features the blood oxygen level and the heart rate for each of the pilot, co-pilot, and the passengers right there on your avionics. So you can monitor it as prominently and easily as you monitor your en engine gauges. That would include carbon monoxide as well, as well as the tank pressure. The oxygen interface is fair game for both experimentals and the certified market. You've got approvals in place? 
We did. Uh, over the past year, uh, we've been working with the FAA to gain approval through the non-required safety equip enhancing equipment, which is the NORSI process. And we just, as of last week, uh, earned approval to install this very system as a one place, a two place, a four place, or a six place in all Part 23 unpressurized aircraft. So as far as installation effort, what's it take to retrofit this in a typical, uh, typical airplane? Well, right now, if you're building an aircraft and working with the panel maker, like Midwest Panel Builders, or Aerotronics, or Advanced Flight Systems, you can have the button as well as the cannula plugs pre-drilled into your panel. That can help. As well, Midwest Panel Builders will actually install the entire system in your aircraft. Um, they're finding and reporting that approximately four hours is required to install the wiring and the plumbing and the fittings into the aircraft, but they've done a couple of these. When I did it as a retrofit into our RV-10, it took me a week. A day of that was putting the actual system in. The other five days of that was uh, getting uh, prepared and pulling seats out and cushions and getting access to the places that I needed to to get to in order to install the plumbing and the electrical. So how about price? What's the typical cost of retrofitting uh, the, at least the oxygen system? All right, you're looking at approximately $4,000 to $6,500, depending on whether or not you want a two-place or a four-place. And what that includes is everything you need, everything that we've shown you, from the cannulas to the plugs to the button to the box to the regulator and the bottle. And you could read a full report on the uh, new ITRA uh, integrated oxygen system in an upcoming issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Reporting for Aviation Consumer here at AirVetra 2022, I'm Larry Anglosano, and thanks a lot to Jim Rutler at ITRA Aviation. Thank you very much.